Bill Common Minor Freunde to the Mysteries of the Past and its Greatest Hits. And it's a banging week this week. This week ending 22nd of February 1982. At 10, we've got one of the classic slow burn hits, Jay Giles' band Centerfold, on the epically long journey to a single week at number one in the midst of a six month run in the top 40. Six months? They're ABBA numbers. It was the fourth biggest hit of the year and the 64th biggest hit of the physical era in my old hometown. It spent the last 40 years in 80s cringe obscurity before it was used again as an ad for a major chain store and suddenly now again it's everywhere. Numero 90 is an old favourite Men It Works Down Under, a song of tragedy and triumph. For the telling of this triumph and tragedy, refer edition number 30. But its day was dimming by now, sliding down from number 5 the week before, tootling off on forbidden flute fruit to the fond memories of a national culture. At 8, we have a record as we previously picked as the fastest hit bound, It's My Party by Dave Stewart and Barbara Gaskin, an unexciting if undeniably of its times record. The record does little to make itself memorable, settling in on a haze of memory like peach fuzz on a hipster's newborn beard. Number seven, the charming and ever so postmodern Kim Wilde was still hanging on in the top ten with Cambodia. Kim was the daughter of 50s rocker Marty Wilde. In the pre beatle days of English pop, acts managed by impresario Larry Parnes were stars who had unlikely stage names such as Wilde, Fury, Steel, Gentle, etc. He did have the opportunity to be Silver Beatles, whom he hired as a backing band for Johnny Gentle, but he turned them down. Which was just as well, he later became notorious for having robbed all of his acts blind. And her brother Ricky was her producer and songwriter. As we've discussed before, many and bigger hits would have come Kim's way, as well as a surprising third act to her career. But for the here and now, a fascinating and well-remembered second hit was the expanse of her world. Sheena Easton, who in the grand scale of things probably deserved a few more hits with her sweet voice and marketable image, sits at number six with her biggest hit, the theme to perhaps Roger Moore's best outing as James Bond for Your Eyes Only. Fans of The Spy Who Loved Me may beg to differ, but I like the slower, more methodical pace of eyes, as well as the retreat from the maniacal supervillain. Julian Glover has always been one of my favourite actors. In a previous video ranking the Bond theme, I praised Easton's warm and understated performance as being perfectly in tune, the back-to-basics ethos of the film. It's a little bit of glamour in the stark, stripped-out, early 80s music scape. Facts are abundant. There are 32 muscles in a cat's ear, a teaspoon of neutron star would weigh 6 billion tons, there are only two countries in the world where you can't buy Coca-Cola, there's no reference to cats in the Bible, or a quick way to tell a lime from a lemon is a lime slice will sink to the bottom of a glass and a lemon slice will float. But really, the important facts are about this week's charts and are as follows. The biggest rise of this week is the record I loathe almost beyond words. What about me by moving pictures? A thoroughly detestable whine. It came into the top 40 after rising 34 places from 72, hitting number one in late March, knocking Centerfold off top spot and clinging on for six weeks before Joan Jett steamrolled it into oblivion. The biggest fall of this week, down 13 places to 33, is a record I always thought was sort of a bookend to Centerfold, the Greg Keane band's The Breakup Song, a prime slice of tuneful, well-crafted rock and roll, the kind of song that, if he had any shame at all, Bruce Springsteen would have wished he wrote. Unbelievably, this didn't get higher than number 14, a criminally low ranking. This week's dominant debutante was Working for the Weekend by Loverboy, which jumped in at 36. 
The most interesting debut much further down the charts was Have You Ever Been Lonely? An electronic hodgepodgery of two versions of the song, one by Jim Reeves and one by Patsy Cline. Now that's great, ain't this new technology wonderful and all, but in what kind of world does Jim Reeves get top billing over Patsy Cline? Madness. The emeritus record on the charts this week was Urgent by Foreigner, 26 weeks in, and for this week's least wise, going back up the charts. It finally stumbled off the top 40 at the beginning of April after 33 weeks in that hallowed company for a top of number 24. It didn't leave the charts altogether until it racked up 38 weeks. Number one in the USA was our old friend Centifold in the midst of a six week spell of top. In foggy London town, the toppermost of the poppermost was The Jam with a town called Malice, the third of four number one singles. Now, good as The Jam were, I would never have thought they'd had four number one singles. Number one album around the town was Business As Usual by Men At Work in the second half of its nine weeks at number one, having been deposed for two weeks by the best of Blondie. Now again, I'd have bet cash money on it being Dare by the Human League, but incredibly, that record never made number one here. Huh? Dare, by the way, is, I dare say it, my sister's favourite record of all time. At number five, dropping from three week last week, is the ever wonderful Go-Go's with Our Lips Are Sealed. Coming out of the LA punk scene in the late 70s, the band signed their deal with IRS in 1981 and were put to work opening for the police. Their debut album Beauty and the Beat, which featured Our Lips Are Sealed, made number one in the US and hung in there for six weeks, which is a great merger on the edges of new wave and classic LA pop. I took a quick straw poll in the writing of this piece and it was determined that the Go-Go's were by some degree of magnitude better than the early Bangles. Well, who knew? In the lovely number four slot is Barry Manilow with his remarkably sharp cover of a late career Four Seasons chestnut, Let's Hang On. Although Manilow did tarry with the top 40 twice more, Let's Hang On was the last time Barry's cheesy smile lit up the top 10. And it's not a bad record. Manilow gives it a contemporary dance feel, dropping the monster fuzz riff from the original. I mean, it's no Copacabana, it must be said, but Perhaps on reflection, that's a good thing. Here we come to number three, Foreigner's Big One for the Money, Waiting for a Girl Like You, which set a then record 10 weeks at number two in the US. So I would guess it was more like Waiting for Gordeaux than Waiting for a Girl Like You. Needless to say, in my opinion, it, like all power ballads, should be set on fire and dropped from a great height onto a golf course inside an insane asylum. But if you like it, then God bless you and all who sail upon your radio waves. Let me know in comments below. At number two this week, down from the summit last week, is the quite unmemorable but not really terrible trouble by Lindsay Buckingham. Sounding as it does like a song that wasn't quite good enough to make the good half of Tusk and not weird enough to make its weird half. It's not a record you're going to play to get the party started or to clear the room at the end. It's just a it's just at the quirky end of the yacht rock scale. At this point it is customary with great pomp and circumstance to unveil the number one record and so it is with high solemnity that we turn the proceedings over to our favourite tub thumping poo flinger, Monty the safety monkey to flog his kit in high whoop de doo. Go Monty! As prophesied in The Past is a Foreign Country number 30, this week sees the crown descend upon Tainted Love by Soft Cell. To be honestly honest, I'm not fussed either way on this record, but should you ask me a record that in some way defines early 1982 for me, this would be one of the first ones I named. Maybe that's the point of a truly great pop single. It's not just the ephemeral joy of you and it in its moment, but it's the way time calcifies it as a mile marker on the road of your life. What guitar were you playing at the time? Who was your girlfriend? Was it Lee? What was on the charts back then? Oh, that bloody irritating tainted love. And then it follows. A wretched Rickenback at 345. And it was Lee, although circumstances were odd. All I know was that as high summer began to take its first stumble towards autumnal inclemency, 
was that I was flush with cash, I had sand between my toes, and the radio it seemed each and every week was smiling on me. And with that we wander back into the past, back in country, up the country, down river and along the highway, into some other sojourn in the past, that most mysterious of foreign countries. I hope to meet with you all there on that uncloudy day.